October 7 saw the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. The world seemed united behind Israel, at least for a while. But now, Secretary of State and the head of the State Department and the man at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue have seemed to have switched sides. What would Michael Flynn be doing if he was running national security like he used to? Watch and find out. raised some excellent points. And I really want your insight on this. On October 7th, we, the world, saw the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. And almost instantaneously, the world stepped up and said, oh my God, this is, this is a horrible massacre. This is terrorism on display. We're with you, Israel. Do something about it. Well, that was October 8th. And now we're nine months later, and everything is backwards. You've got Anthony Blinken, Jake Sullivan, the president, the vice president, Europe, the EU, the UN, they've switched sides. What's happened? Is there yeah. an agenda to have Israel destroyed? How do you explain the yeah. lack of release the hostages now? surrender your weapons now or you'll be destroyed. Yeah. And, and Blinken flies over there every couple of weeks, it seems, to convince Bibi or Gantz or Gallant, the upper echelon of Israel's management, to make a deal, to leave Hamas in power, to leave the hostages, including American hostages, underground in cages. Yeah, what this is, is going on? This administration said that you cannot kill an ideology in Hamas. I mean, the national security spokesperson, John Kirby, made that statement about a couple of months ago, just talking, talking as though you cannot, you know, when we talk about destroying Hamas, you know, he says, you can't destroy an ideology. That's bullshit. Excuse my Irish. You know, the, the, ask the Nazis of, of Germany, you know, that, that ideology was destroyed. Ask the Japanese imperialists, that ideology was destroyed. Hamas it has a, is a, as a force must be destroyed. What they did on October 7th was, was so, inhumane it didn't the 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 response by the world didn't didn't come nine months later the response by the world came like a week later okay the protests in the united states of america these college campuses that exploded with pro-palestinian protests you know you see all the flags and the placards and the people with bullhorns and the, and the organization of how they were able to achieve massive massive pro pro-palestinian protests on college campuses, and I mean within a week after the attack on the 7th. So to me, there's far more sinisterness to this than, than I think than, the, than meets the eye. And, and maybe another time we can talk about that. But I, I think that this was well known. I have been very public about the, uh, the lack of security uh, by, it, by the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, along that part of the of their borders, you know, the Gaza Strip borders, of, you know, in the south and and uh, and a little bit there in the west. I've walked that, I've seen that, I've been at the various Me gates. Too. So yeah, have I. And so so th there was a problem. There was a breakdown. Got it. What the, what Hamas did, and there's and they still have done. They still hold American hostages. They still hold Israeli hostages. So this is not about the destruction of Israel. Israel can never be destroyed. And I don't use that word never, ever. Okay, or if I do, I'll, I'll caveat it just like I just did. Israel will never be destroyed. The state of Israel can be destroyed, okay? The state of Israel can be destroyed if they allow this, this crazy, crazy uh, deal that is being presented to uh, Netanyahu's government, if they allow this, Yes, things might back down a, a, you know, slightly, but it'll, it'll all come back again and it will grow and grow and grow. The, the thing is about an enemy is an enemy learns, okay? And this is a, this is a rapidly learning enemy that, that the Israelis are facing. And it's not just Hamas, it's this global Islamic revolution that is going on right now. It's taking place in Europe, it's taking place in the United States of America. It is working. It is working. 
against the interests of Israel. And, and, and from, a, from a, a U.S. perspective, you know, what are our interests? Our interests should be, our president should be fighting for peace. You know, that's what, if, that, if I want my president to do anything, it's fight for peace. Don't fight for more war. By, by presenting this peace agreement, this quote unquote peace agreement, it is a exclusive uh, invite to more war, to a greater war, to a greater conflict. It, it allows Iran to win. It allows Hezbollah to win. It allows Hamas to win. It allows the Houthi rebels to win. It allows the radicalized Islamic world to win. And now what's next is this chokehold, okay? This chokehold of Israel. Israel already started to feel the, the breath being taken out of it by the, the basically incursion of the state of Israel by different elements because of, because of what Israel has, has been, been very benevolent about and allowed because it's a, it's, it's a democratic country that has its own set of rule of laws, it's, you know, rules of law and, and its own constitution. It's a very powerful country and a very great country, but it will not survive. It will not survive unless they destroy these organizations. And I mean, destroy them. If they, and I, and I'm not, I, I am anti-war, okay? I am anti-war. I want people to know that, but I'm not anti-stupid war. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I said that wrong. I said I'm, I'm anti-war, and when we get into some of these stupid wars, like Ukraine as an example, the, the, the attack on the 7th of October by Hamas and the stealing and the, the theft of these beautiful children and other hostages that they have, the rape, murder, beheadings, I mean, the grotesque inhumanity that these people have you cannot have this. You cannot have these people as your neighbors. They have to be destroyed. And, and last point that I'd make about this, Palestine. The, you know, people need to go back and study the history of what this is about, right? And, and I will tell you, the Palestinian problem is not an Israeli problem. It is not a Jewish problem. It, where are the rest of the Arab world? Where is the rest of the Arab world when it comes to dealing with these people? They don't want them. You've seen the, we've all seen the wall, the, the, the concertina wall and the thick wall that Egypt has down along the, you know, down towards the Sinai to keep the people, not, not to keep people from, from going in, to keep people from coming out of it. They don't want these people, Jordanians, Saudis, Iraqis, oh, none of them, none of them want, you know, be, and why? Every because they are a problem. The countries you've mentioned has refused to take one exactly. God's, not not thousands, not a hundred thousand, like Biden's right. talking about. They won't take a single person into their country. You're a hundred percent right.